As part of your grade this term, you'll be doing a three-day diet analysis. In this session, I want to give you a, an overview of how to collect, record, and submit your data using the NutriCalc um, software on Connect. Data for the three days, I would like you to use three consecutive days. Now you can choose the days that you want. You can uh, choose, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. It doesn't really matter when you choose them. Some students like to choose days where they're totally in control, so um, they kind of can see how they are doing eating-wise when they have time to fix their meals and, and take time to, to think about meals. Other students like to do them on days when they're, they're going to school, they're kind of rushed, uh, and they just want to know how they're doing when they're basically not in control. So it doesn't really matter, just do three consecutive days. When I would suggest getting three different pieces of paper or in a notebook, three different pages, and just choosing for each day uh, one of the pages and writing down all the food and beverages uh, that you eat. Uh, now it may be difficult to determine serving sizes because you're going to have to write down the serving sizes, uh, how many servings you had, uh, and then all everything that is included in the meal that you ate. Um, so all the meats, the beverages, vegetables, fruits, cereals, all inputted separately. Uh, and you can use the guideline that I've shown you with your hand to, to, to help determine serving sizes. Um, and we're not, you know, we're going to be close. You're not going to be exact. I don't expect you to weigh your food or, you know, measure it kind of thing. But if you can use these, you know, your hand as a guideline, then uh, that will be close enough. Um, so keep track of your food as best you can um, and then you may have to separate out some of your foods for example if you have a sandwich um, on the in the software for NutriCalc you are going to uh, be able to choose like if you had a tuna fish sandwich but it's not going to be the same one that you ate uh, and how you fixed it so if you have like a tuna fish sandwich, you're going to have to separate out the bread as a, a separate entry. Uh, you're going to have to separate out how much tuna you used. If you added mayonnaise, separate that out as like one tablespoon of mayonnaise. Uh, if you add lettuce or pickles or onions or whatever you add, those would all be separate entries. So for a sandwich, you may have five separate entries uh, for that sandwich. Uh, might not be a good time to have a casserole because you would have to separate everything in that casserole. So unless you made it from scratch, uh, then it wouldn't be a good option. But there are fast foods on there. So if you eat uh, fast foods on occasion uh, or often, whatever, there is McDonald's on there and Burger King and uh, Skipper's, I think, and Arby's and all of those that you can choose from. If you have a pizza, I'm, I'm sure, I haven't really looked in depth, but I'm sure Pizza Hut's on there and those kind of things. So you could choose. A lot of times though, um, there are students who eat different foods. So in the database for the NutriCalc software, there's gonna be foods that are normally eaten um, in this country. So if you come from a different culture, different country uh, that eat uh, foods that maybe uh, we don't normally eat in this country, then you're going to have to choose something that's fairly close. Like, is it close to green beans? Is it close to lettuce? Is it close to noodles or something like that? And then just decide and get something close. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be exact, but it'll be close enough for our purposes. Um, and so choose those foods and then uh, please eat normally. Uh, you're not going to get a better grade by eating better. You're not, you know, if you eat tofu and drink carrot juice every day, is not going to get you a better grade if, if you ate a Whopper every day or uh, McDonald's, you know, Big Mac or something like that. It's not really going to matter. This database uh, that you're forming is just for you. Uh, and you're, but you are going to be eventually you know, about starting about the third week or so, uh, starting to do a written evaluation 
uh, because you're going to input your data and it's going to compare it to some standards and I'll show you about those in a second that uh, are set for you for who you are and you're they're going to compare those standards and if you don't meet within a certain reasonable you know uh, measure with the standard then you're going to have to sh to uh, show how you could meet that what would you need to do to meet those standards uh, I wouldn't recommend trying to skimp on foods uh, you know but eat normally because sometimes if you skimp on foods thinking that you're not going to have to input a lot of data what you input, end up doing is having a lot of writing to do because you don't meet the standards because you didn't eat very much um, so I wouldn't do that just to eat normal yeah, if you eat a lot of hot dogs and fast food then do it because it's basically going to show you where you're at um, so it doesn't really matter to me for this paper um, how you eat uh, it's it's more for you than anything else so keep track of those three days on separate piece of paper and then I'm going to go through and show you how you're going to input that uh, those foods into the NutriCalc uh, software. So in Moodle, what you'll go to is in lesson one, you'll see uh, the three-day diet instructions, uh, but you'll also see the NutriCalc URL, and that's going to take you to the Connect site where you can access the um, the um, NutriCalc software. So again, be the same, and I'll, I'll go through the same scenario when you're taking your Learn Smarts and Quizzes uh, through Connect, but you're just going to put in the email address that you uh, gave to Connect when you registered and your password. It will take you to the class, and on the right-hand side column, you'll see the Diet Analysis Tool, the NutriCalc Plus program. So you'll click on that. Uh, and it'll take you to the first page of the NutriCalc Plus. And what you'll need to do is choose profiles because you're going to put in basically information about yourself so it can set a standard for you uh, in, in order to have something to compare what you ate to the standard of who you said you are. So you'll go in and uh, select a new profile. Uh, and then you'll you'll see where it's going to ask you for your name, your birth date, because it's going to give an age, uh, whether you're uh, male or female. It also has options for pregnant, lactating, height, weight, uh, all of those, and fill out that information, and then uh, choose if if you want to state your goal weight, just zero, uh, or just put in your normal weight there. And, but if you want to change something, you could do that. Um, and your activity level, um, if you click on that, in, just in the space there where it says activity level, it'll give you the options of what they think is uh, sedentary, low activity, you know, active, very active kind of thing. Because some, some individuals will overestimate um, their activity level. So do that. And um, you're going to create a profile. So let me go back. Oops. Going to create a profile. So make sure you save everything. Uh, and then you're going to go into the intakes. Uh, and this is where you're going to put in your food. So you get your food that you wrote down. Uh, you're going to choose the day that you, you know, your first day. And so choose a date. Uh, and then you're going to choose, <clears throat> you know, what what your food is. So you just go in and for example, if you had uh, toast for breakfast or something like that, you just put whole wheat bread. I would highly recommend that um, you be very specific about what you ate um, because just like if you're searching on a search in like Google or something, if you just put in one word, like if you put in bread, it's going to give you over 500 options because anything that has bread in it, like bread pudding, it's going to bring up. But if you had um, whole wheat bread, just put whole wheat bread, or more than likely, it would you would put bread, comma, whole wheat uh, would be another. So be as specific as you possibly can. 
then what it will do is bring up um, your options and so when you when it brings up your options then you're just going to add it uh, and then so I just picked and add what we've read and so you can see that it recorded right here the bread whole wheat um, and then it's going to ask you whether uh, you want you ate that for a snack did you eat it for breakfast did you eat it for lunch uh, and so you need to choose one of those options choose how much uh, and if you had two slices you put two in there it's going to give you options like for bread slices it's also going to give you some weight options uh, for uh, beverages like milk or something it's going to give you cups or ounces that you can choose from uh, if you're eating vegetables it's also going to give you cups and or weight ounces it's also going to be in metrics if you're doing oils then it's going to give you teaspoons tablespoons those kind of things so you just choose what size uh, you did and then I would highly rec I think I would save the changes just to keep track just in case something happens and your computer crashes or something you'll have them but save them uh, and then you're just going to go back and search for another food once you get that all um, you will go back in and basically add another food and just keep doing that keep just continuing adding foods until you're uh, completed with that day and then make sure you save all of your changes for doing that uh, then the next option is your day save your changes I guess I got ahead of myself but save all your changes uh, and then you're going to change your end day day intake day to day two and just repeat everything uh, that we just did um, by adding new foods and going through that and choosing when you ate it and how much and, and that kind of thing all right so once you're done then with the three days you are going to select reports uh, and uh, there's lots of options for reports but what I want you to see is the all daily reports it's going to be all the way at the bottom of that list uh, and it's basically going to include everything that's above it so just choose all daily reports um, and so uh, you are going to add your name and instructor's name and I mean I don't really care but that's what they ask you for if you don't fill that in it won't let you save it and then as you notice on the bottom here you want to select all three of your days um, that you uh, ate so if you don't do that it's going to just do it for one day or something so coach make sure you check all three days uh, that you recorded and then um, make sure your report is a PDF uh, and you'll want to view the report unless you just wanted to email it to yourself uh, but to view the report then you would um, go here to and it will show you all data reports and there's going to be depending on how much you ate there's going to be about 20 pages of information uh, because on the all data reports and you can look at it but as you scroll down it's going to have a table basically that um, I mean this first page is just the recommendations but then it's going to you're going to have a graph that is going to compare uh, your values to the DRI which it set up for you uh, and you're gonna have two columns and then it'll give you a graph of where you fit into that um, and we're going to be using that information and we'll go over it specifically on another recording about how to do your written diet evaluation so you're going to need that information eventually so you could print it out for yourself or uh, but you definitely need to save it so first of all you'd want to go to the little down icon up there and download it uh, there may be other ways to do this but this is the way I know that works for me but download that information and save the file somewhere where you know it 
you can find it or you can open it up and save it it just depends if you want to open it up as a pdf and then save it somewhere because uh, sometimes when you hit the save file it saves it somewhere and you can't find it uh, but if you know where it's going then you could just save it um, and because you're going to have to submit it on Moodle uh, and then in lesson three, what you'll see is the diet analysis submission upload. Uh, so uh, you'd want to go to lesson three. I mean, if you get it done early uh, before the third week, because it's due the third week of the term. Uh, but if you get it done early, you definitely can submit it. You just have to go to lesson three and then go to the assignments and go to the submission page. Uh, click on that. Take you to... Uh, add a submission so you're going to add a submission there and then make sure you add the file so you're going to have to go up here click on that to add your file uh, then it's going to have you choose the file so you you click on choose the file go to where you saved it uh, and double click on it or attach it normally you can just double click and it will attach it and then give it give it a name uh, if you want to put your name on there, author or whatever that's fine um, you might do that because then I'll know who it is uh, it won't. and um, make sure you then click on upload this file um, and then make sure you'll see that the file has been uh, attached uh, and then what you'll want to do is save the changes um, and then it will automatically submit it into Moodle and then I will grade it online all right so let me know if there's any questions but other than that that should uh, work for you now the written diet evaluation just so you know at the end is usually is not due until the last week of the term um, so once you get done with this uh, diet data upload and everything then if you want to you can look ahead and I usually have the um, the written diet evaluate, evaluation powerpoints and video uh, or audio in week four uh, so that um, after you get it submitted and I, I look at it and make sure that you didn't make any mistakes and that then you could go ahead and get started whenever you want but the due date is not until around the the last week of the term all right, so I hope this helps. Thanks.